the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We were talking in the second session of uh, God is my joy, and now we're speaking about the, the oil of gladness, and we spoke also about the, the oil, the, the, um, the oil of uh, joy, oil of gladness and oil of joy, two different things. We spoke about that that oil of gladness is came only upon the Lord Jesus. He was the one anointed more than his companion. It means that no other one had the same anointing of gladness except the Lord himself. But um, and, and the oil of joy is given to us instead of sadness, instead of depression, instead of uh, a broken heart and all those things from Isaiah. But we here is the body of Christ. We are entitled as his body to have that oil of gladness. And we said that the oil of gladness is a maintain inner feeling of uh, happiness inside of you. And it's coming because of the plan of God. You're focusing on things who are eternal or things, the plan of God from the beginning till the end. So every time you use the word gladness, is not speaking about a great rejoicing He's speaking about a continuous, beautiful joy who continue in your life like was in the life of Jesus. And it come upon you and out of you will spread to others like a good, nice aroma. When you have a good perfume, it come out of you, either you like it or not, people will smell that aroma. Well, the joy is coming as a small shots to heal or to uh, help you into your walk of every day. And we get to the two uh, main things that uh, uh, was given to us into that short teaching. Um, it's like God give us the wine in Psalm 104 to make the man's heart glad, the bread to strengthen him, and the oil, which is anointing, to make his face shine. So what is inside come outside. I just do a bit of repetition for you to be uh, joining us on what we're talking about. And then that beautiful Ezekiel, uh, uh, Jeremiah, sorry, 15, 16, that uh, when he found the word and he eat it, when he eat the word, it's not only get strong, no, the word was for him for joy and gladness. So you eat the word of God for joy. You get the communion for joy. And that anointing of joy and anointing of gladness was upon Jesus will come upon you. So that's in short what we uh, spoke about. When he find the word, he eat it. So today you make sure that you get those elements and you be, be exactly you are of what you eat. What you eat is the word of God. You be word of God to the other people. Now we spoke about the joy which is coming from our salvation. So everything is planned about our salvation. Give us joy. And here is saying, uh, that he will, uh, with joy, you will draw uh, water from the fountain. It's saying here, but whoever drink of the water that I will give him shall be in him. Uh, he shall uh, be no thirsty forever. The water I will give him will become in him a fountain, a fountain of water springing up to eternal life. This is a promise of eternal life like the communion. It's a promise of eternal life. So here is you drawing water from the, the, the well of salvation. And wells, it's plural. It means like there is many places that you can draw water of salvation. God saved you of what? Of course, all of us Christians who say, save, save me from my sins. But save you to what? That's the, answer. That's the main question. He saved you from hell. He saved you from eternal damnation, all those things. But save you to what? So if you're not entering into the, the will of God for your life, then why he has to save you? Why, or, or another way, put it that way, he could save you and make you die tomorrow. Because this is the way you save to die and you have eternal life. But no, God saved you. Yeah, there is wells of salvation. You draw out of those wells and you get things you save from many things in your life and you can name it from your selfishness, from your greediness from the love of money from the love of uh, uh, sexual things from whatever you want to say you know uh, he saved you from a lot of things from hunger from but he saved you for what is the question and he saved you for good deeds that's why god uh bring us and you can draw every day out of that well of salvation um 
Yeah, so we get the oil of joy for mourning garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So everyone who has a spirit of heaviness means that you awake in the morning and you do not know why you are sad or why you're not happy. Uh, this is what you should be doing. Garment of praise. He put on you mantle. Mantle of salvation. Now he's putting on you the mantle of praise. Um, and then uh, um, beauty instead of the ashes. The ashes which are the things which are burned in your life, which are no good anymore. You don't have to continue to dwell in them. God want to give you beauty for it. Mourning uh, is, of course, uh, I may say that definition. Depression is a little bit of, it's not mourning and it's not sorrow. Uh, I have, uh, you know, the doctors, you know, write medication for people here coming from the war area. But it's not right because those people are not depressed. If there is a reason for your sadness, then that's not the depression. It's just when people awake sad and there is no reason. Or the, the, the reason there continue for more than six months, then you need attention. It's going to be medical condition. So here is the morning. You are sad because something happened. You are unhappy because something happened. Uh, you need to have the oil of joy, that shots that God give you. The communion and the word of God. The communion and the word of God. Word of God and communion. Pick the one that you want to put first. Um, our um, talking about that, Pastor Alfie and I, I want to show you this because this is very unknown um, passage of the scripture. We all know that the children of God uh, have uh, uh, in the wilderness, they had that cloud which covered them from heat and they have that pillow of fire which not, he give them heat and give them direction in the wilderness for 40 years but maybe none of them know that there was a rock and there was rock it was following them everywhere they go and that rock was giving them water no one preached about this and I want to discover it in Corinthians it's in my bible and never saw it uh, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them that spiritual rock that followed them, which was giving them the water. And the rock was Christ. 1 Corinthians 4, 10, 10, 4. No one is knowing that. Not much are acquainted or familiar with that Bible verse. That, you know, you look at, you know, that cloud, you say it's natural, you know, that cloud is coming and whatever. But it, 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 a rock was following you, you're familiar with, their, their feet didn't swell and their clothes were, uh, you know, growing with them or whatever. Uh, but um, having a rock who follow you, Jesus is the rock who only, not only is our found, foundation, but he's the rock who follow you to give you that water of salvation anytime you want to drink it. And I, I, I love to share this one one more time for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. Spiritual rock will follow you all the time. And the rock was Christ. There is a place where really God get hold of you, on you, get hold of you. And this is really where things are different. You know, God, whatever, but that's a different level. I remember when I met with Christ, he get hold of me. And I don't know what the meaning of this. I'm going to say it, but I do not know what the meaning of this. My life was... Uh, not the same again ever. I was just rotating or center, you know, centrifuge was just among Jesus. He he just kept in hold of my heart, of my inner being. So when we really think of greater is he that is in uh, that who lie in the word, and we see that the Holy Spirit is really inside of you, the word of God is inside of you, is deep into your heart in a, in a great format, and out of that belly will flow the rivers which go and drink and people drink out of it and that get that rejoicing from the well of salvation. But it's not going to come from an out, uh, uh, you know, a mental of outside joy, whatever. It has to come from inside. He hold, you know, if he hold your heart or hold your sorrow, your spirit, I do not know. I do not even understand what being hold of, but he get hold of me and my life not the same. 
So I pray, Father, that everyone is listening to my preaching right now, as you did with me on that moment of time, that you get hold of me and I was seeing everything with a different uh, glasses, with different dimension, with different view. I pray that you take hold of all those children who are listening to me now, either on now or on the online, Father. Get hold of them. Let them see the Holy Spirit, which is the rivers of living water coming out of their belly and go and give uh, salvation to people afar. Let your word be imprinted into their soul and into their spirit. Let the joy of your salvation come upon them in a way, in an inexpressible joy. I pray that in the name of Jesus. So like I said here, uh, we are on different reality, reality of above. And I show that picture to show it to you again. These are people who are looking into good heavenly things and, and look at the heaven, whatever, but they live on an earthly realm. But the children of God who are caught, you know, get hold of me that express it now, they are living in another dimension. Yeah, you're physically here, you go to work, you serve your children, you go to cook, you go to clean, you go whatever into your everyday life. But you're totally and completely out of this world. Your head is only on things which are not here and people think you're crazy. Actually, the the, the profession of medicine, they give it like a, this, uh, give it a name for people who are crazy of God. They give them ment the mental illness. But uh, it's because they are not really understanding that we are living in a world unseen as exactly as the unseen. When all the things of concerning God and worrying God worries you, when you feel like God wants to say something and he found no one to share it, and it's only you who say, all right, say it to me. There is no other one ready for you. Then you get concerned with the things of God. And, and like I said into the first session, that this lady here, she has a... a, a her case and she's ready to go at any time. This is when she's ready to be raptured at any time. That's the design of the children who really live for God. Now we're gonna talk a little, a little bit uh, differently or same thing. Uh, he's saying here in James, and this is not an Old Testament verse, it's a new lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Why God will say such a thing, you know, it's opposite to what we preach today. We have here the prophets of uh, Jeremiah, the, who wrote the book of Lamentation. When he was ordained, he was ordained to root up and to pull down. Root out, it means it's a bad uh, uh, planting, take it out. Pull down, this is a bad building or bad uh, things, put it down. And he was going with this prophecy for quite a while. There is a time when these things wasn't needed, but on the same time, uh, Jeremiah, uh, he was also uh, uh, anointed for to build and to plant. So for you, there be time that you have to pull the things which are not from God out of your life and other people's life, to pull down the things which are not from God, that there is time to build and to plant. So that weeping, uh, sorrowful, uh, uh, prophet, man of God, uh, Jeremiah 1, he said, what could be built or planted? The desolate ruins, ruin, ruins left by Israel rebellion. They've been so wicked. And we can see that if he's talking about Israel on the how many years before Christ, how about us now? The wickedness around us and the rebellion in, in the people come and lie to your face. And the wickedness is overwhelming in a way like really, God, how can you live with this uh, behavior of our, uh, our, our behavior? But the Lord has a time. Similarly, when sin or adversity left our life in ruin, how can we rebuild and plant again? The answer lies into the branch, which is branch of righteousness within Jesus. So we cannot really uh, uh, deroot things and and the uh, um, pull down things but for us to build and to plant we need Jesus which is the only one who can uh, do that work so that same said prophet and that same one who's speaking here in James in the New Testament what can turn their heart into the rejoicing and the building is the lie is Jesus the branch of righteousness 
Now I'm going to start from the story from the beginning a little bit. So you know what is the plan of God and you know what can take you from just the anointing of uh, or the oil of, of joy to the oil of gladness. The gladness is when you comprehend the plan of God. But let's say you are in a war and then the, the commander come and ensure the plan. This is what we need to do to take this and do this and that. So you are more overwhelmed with the big plan, which just like go there and uh, attack these things or whatever. This is a small task, but when you go and see in bird view the plan of God and be part of what he is doing, what he did and what he's doing now and what he's about to do, this gives you satisfaction and confirmation inside of your heart. You are not really something uh, floating into the planet, planet in the air. You are attached to very good cause and a very good creator. And through him, you can do a lot of things. So here is the beauty of that verse. And God said, let it be light. So God decided to create the light. And uh, out of it, he make the life of man. Uh, I think this verse, sometimes I can't comprehend it. But when I put it on reverse, I, I can relate to it. There was light. And the light was the life of man. Or the life was the light of man. I do not understand. And in him was life. So the life was given to man through Jesus. So that, um, uh, what we call it here, uh, the branch of righteousness. This branch who came out of Jesse, Jesus. God created that light, that life of man through him. There's no other way. So you can't be, um, there was a picture of the, uh, Oprah was Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And next to him was Oprah into the picture saying, there must be another way. Well, good luck, Oprah. Good luck, my darling. Good luck. Have the best of this life. If you have another way, go for it. But here is the creator. He created the life of man. So the light was given, the light. You know how the light creates into the plant? When you have a plant, how is this growing? You don't know. So light will come and create that life out of it through the photosynthesis, you know, which is for us maybe our faith. Bring that light and make us change, you know. So um, the light shine in the darkness. So there was darkness around. Uh, and, and, the, uh, and the darkness has not overcome. God has a light and has a life. And this life is coming only from the hand of God the Son. S-O-N. Jesus. The branch of righteousness. So what happened here, that uh, prophecy, the people were sitting in darkness. So in the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, this uh, verse has a meaning. Uh, and it has different meaning on the end of the ministry of Jesus. The same Bible verse has two different meanings or two different dimensions. People were sitting in darkness. They saw great light. And to them who are sitting in the region on the shadow of death, light sprang upon them. There was the light of God coming, and there was the birth of the um, of the Savior of the world. This is in the beginning that they saw great light. But what happened later on? Jesus, after his death, he went into uh, to preach for the one who are already dead. So his ministry finished for the us who are alive on that time, if we were alive. But then he went for all people from Adam till the last one, which was on the cross with Jesus, who dead, who dead, and he preached for them the same preaching. So that Bible verse come now in a different, he entered there in hell and all those people, when they saw him, they rejoice. You know, here is the angel when they saw the Lord, they rejoice, a great joy. There is a savior of the world. So that light was in the hand of God or this life was in the hand of God and give it to us. He was coming on the world in the form of the Messiah, the baby Messiah who grew. But in the end of his death, he went and, and preached to the people on the darkness and the shadow of light. And when they saw him, you know, many of them rejoice with a great joy. So that's the same verse of Isaiah or uh, here in, in Matthew, because like I said, every verse is endorsed by another one on a different time. People sitting in darkness, 
now see that verse in a different way. Where we hear into the beginning sitting in darkness means that nothing was joyful into the human life on that time. Was nothing eternal, was nothing of a deep things. But when you, you see that on the people who are really finished their life, they're sitting in darkness, you can understand. They were sitting there waiting for the preaching of the Messiah. See, Jesus went into the hell to go and preach for those ones, but not in the hell, into the in Hawaii, which is the Sheol. Seeing a great light, those living in the land of the shadow of death, and on them a light has shined. Different meaning for the same Bible verse. When they saw the light, they rejoiced and rejoiced. Those are the, 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 uh, the shepherds when they were in time of the born of the Messiah. And here our Messiah went there. And he had a good plan. So those rejoicing, that uh, topic that we're talking about, it's because there is a plan of God that light came into the Messiah and then he saved the one who already passed before his coming. So his plan, we rejoice in it. See what God is sharing with you and me today. The rest of the verse, the people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. They had dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them has the light shine. But see here, God is showing you his beauty of the plan. You have multiplied the nation. So God is showing you that because of the plan of the devil, disrupting God's ideas of he multiplied the nation, increase, not increase the joy, the joy before you according to the joy in harvest, according to the joy when the people divide the spoil. It's a great joy. Salvation bring, bring to the people who are living on the time of Jesus and the people who are into, the, uh, uh, into this Sheol, whatever, they bring them a great joy. They all of them rejoice seeing him. Uh, like even Abraham and Isaac and all that. And, uh, and and here is the plan of God. I'm keep talking about the plan of God who give us the oil of gladness. Um, that you didn't leave my soul in hell or your holy one to see corruption. Here Jesus, uh, this is said about Jesus, but it's said about you and me. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, I have a resurrection life too. You're not going to leave me in hell. So these are the things over the cloud that I'm preaching about. People are not concerned in, oh, we're sick now, we're going to get whatever. But we're thinking of our eternal uh, uh, destiny and eternal things. He's saying here, uh, yeah, this is in Acts 2, 27. He's seeing his before speak on the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. That body was not corruptible. As, and, and when you read this, oh, means my body will not see corruption. I will have an a uncorruptible body. And those things take your attention more. What should I cook today? You know, should I do this or do that? Shall I wear that dress or that uh, costume or this one? What should I, you know, those little things are now fading into the light of the plan of God of, Creating life and uncorruptible body. See step by step how I uh, I should I'll expose you know or show the plan of God. And Peter was saying here, um, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that they are dead. Well, this is here when we get that idea of Jesus went and preached for the dead. It's not my thoughts. It's Peter's thought that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. So even that, those people who are already passed, they will be visited by God, by the gospel. Same gospel who is preached to you, same gospel preached to the one who passed away, same way of salvation for you and for the Jews and for anyone. There is no one other way to uh, the people who think Jews have another plan. Many, you know, uh, evangelists of America preach that rubbishness. We have one plan of salvation in that branch, branch of righteousness, Jesus, the Messiah. You can say that to Oprah so he can save her soul. It's only one plan. There's no other plan. So the same gospel will be given to us. It's been given to the people who are in hell or in, in the, sorry, in uh, which means the, the Sheol. And then things of God come by revelation. It's not by information. Information will never save you. 
it will never change you. It never transformation come by information. You can have a very wonderful uh, lecturer. He's so awesome. He's like, but he's not really like the weakest preacher because the preacher have the anointing to preach and change people's life. While the 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 guy who was in the theater, that professor speak to your mind only. There is no revelation coming upon you. That revelation who's changing you and changing your life. These people who are living in that place uh, of uh, Sheol, they need to have that revelation as you and I, as anyone who's been uh, exposed to the light of God. And they look like really uh, uh, zombies, whatever, but they turn mm -hmm. into light as the word of God saying. Where is this saying that? Yeah. They walked in the darkness, they seen great light. Not one light, not two light, but they seen great light. Light come upon their life to so transform them from the place of uh, uh, Sheol to get take them to the paradise with the where Jesus promises that the, the thief next to him. So here is the transformation of sorrow to joy. Sorrow mm -hmm. to joy. We are talking about that. And, and here is the beauty of the psalmist in 51 when uh, he had that sin probably um, he killed or prepared for the killing of the man and he took his wife and all those stories of David. Uh, he said to me, restore to me the joy of, salva of, my, of my salvation. So there is joy in your salvation. That's the plan of God, that's the uh, bahga that we're talking about, the oil of gladness that we're speaking about, the joy of your salvation, that plan. Not joy because I'm sad today, you know, I, you know, some money that I didn't play well and I'm losing it, gambler, whatever, he lost some money, he said. No, that's not about that. By the way, if, if gambling is your problem, in the name of Jesus, I speak that you're free from gambling. I don't know why God got that on me when I'm preaching, but if you're gambling and you're caught into this, may the Lord set you free and take you to the, restore the joy of your salvation. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Key of rejoicing, what Peter is saying, whom having not seen him, look at the beauty of this verse. Um, some people, many people didn't see the Lord. Though now you do not see him, but yet believe, uh, you rejoice with joy, inexpressible joy. And in the other version, you say unspeakable joy and full of glory. Unspeakable joy. As you know, you, you can go there and you cannot express it into human language. Probably the only way you can express it in tongues for people who don't believe in tongues. That's the only way that you can express it, that unexpressible joy. <laughs> you didn't see him. You should really see the Lord to get that unexpressible joy. This is one of my best pictures. I love it. I love it. This guy has the word of God, joy of God, and he's happy. It's another word. He's over the cloud that I'm speaking about. Now here, the we call it anointment, anointing of gladness, anointing of uh, joy. Anointing is the Holy Spirit, of course. He has to do adjustment in your life. You're not good enough for him. Uh, uh, and, and we read that in Jeremiah, that his fire filled my soul. I cannot be quiet. Something in you is shift. I cannot be quiet. The fire of the Holy Spirit come upon you and change you. And, and instead of you searching for what type of food, what type of dress, what is uh, the last, latest uh, fashion for glasses, this is fashion for shoes and less fashion of jeans. And you, you, you just like have other things. You are tuned to hear the voice of God. That's kind of, kind of your attraction now. Your life is when he gets hold of you. There is something shifting on you. That's the Holy Spirit. No one can do that to you but the Holy Spirit. So if you never received the Holy Spirit before with the utterance of speaking in tongues, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you get the command that uh, to obey the voice of the Lord and receive the gift of speaking in tongues and the Holy Spirit in its fullness, with prophesying, with interpretation and tongues and all the rest in the name of Jesus and stop to be stubborn and stop resisting the Holy Spirit. 
If you think you can do it, do it through your intellect, you are fooling on yourself, my dear. There's the only Holy Spirit who can do all those deep changes. So receive now the Holy Ghost who can really turn you to a different man, who can tune your hearing and, and tune your vision and make you see, make you concerned about only the heavenly things. This man, you know, he can see the sin and the sin hurt him. And that one, he start to cry for the sin of man and ask God for forgiveness for them and whatever. There is unspeakable joy that God can put into your life. Unspeakable joy from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12. Uh, the Apostle Paul said, I heard an unspeakable word that is not given to men to utter. You can have that expression of the joy of God in you. You cannot even utter those words that they just too, uh, our language is so imperfect. Only God's language, which language of the creation, which is perfect. When you're speaking in tongues, I had a dear brother who has a problem that the tongues will cease one day. How about you using it before it cease? Because if the tongues will cease, our tongues now speaking to you, you're hearing my voice will cease too. It's a, a form of language and tongues. Don't twist the word of God and reject him because here today, don't leave. Don't change the channel or whatever because you need to have those un unspeakable joy, that unuttered word, unspeakable word. You hear them from the mouth of the Holy Spirit when he turn you and, and shift you to a place when only the plan of God is your interest. Unspeakable words. unspeakable yearning, unspeakable groaning. They only, they are not permit to men to utter. It's too deep. You don't even know what's happening in you. That's how when the Holy Spirit come upon the person and change him from inside out, you're a totally different person. Give chance to your heart and to your mind to receive God in his format, not to your format. You have too much agenda. You pick and choose in the word of God. How you don't get it simply and let it get hold of you. The Lord of God, um, I pray the word of God and his joy get hold of you and change you to a different man and different woman. When the things of heaven are only the things which attract your attention. But here is the beauty of Christ. He give you that garment. See what he's saying, Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall in. Be joyful in my God, for he clothes me with the garment of salvation. This is something that no one can give to you but the Lord. See that filthy, yucky man, dirty, uh, uh, clothes uh, full of rags, like rags, rags, whatever. And he covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. He give you that robe of salvation or um, the garment of salvation. No one can give you this. But then what, what is the result of having that garment? Uh, things you do and things you do not do. Um, I'm going to speak to you about this was a bit of revelation to me so you can see what you can do. Um, when people go for the book of Revelation and read about the seven uh, churches, they always are attracted to the warning and to the good things and what this church is doing. And, but for me, on that moment, God gave me, got hold of me of that thing. Um, and it's repeated on the seven churches, as you can see in front of you. He that have ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And it's repeated. So that... Bible, you know, really like the Holy Ghost that have nothing to do is really um, no work for him to do to keep repeating that sentence again and again seven times. Isn't it that boring? Well, that's very essential that the Lord wants you to hear what the Spirit is saying. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying? Or you pick and choose which suits your life. Hear what the Spirit is saying. And Jesus keeps saying it, you know, and you can see how repeated in front of you. He that has, do you have a ear? Do you hear what the Spirit is saying to you? 
Jesus mm. was in the middle of the seven churches. But let me, you know, uh, you know, uh, show the rest of the revelation. This used to be like the tongue of Jesus when he was on life with, with uh, uh, John the Revelator. Uh, when I uh, saw this part, you know, God showed it to me, I was like, wow. Uh, you can see Matthew, 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 Mark, and Luke, all of them. What is that? Jesus was saying that verse always to them. He that have ear to hear, let him hear. And he, let him hear. Who has ear to hear, let him hear. It's repeated all the time. There was like a continuous word that Jesus was saying. He that have ear, let him hear. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. It's not really um, enough. Enough is enough. You keep repeating yourself. If any man have ear, let him hear. Let him hear. Is that ear has to, uh, ear to hear? There was a language in Jesus' mouth all the time when he was living with the disciple. But what is the difference between this language and this one? What well, Jesus was not with them anymore on that time when he was saying that to them all the time. Listen to what is he saying. Listen, because the spirit of Jesus was with them when he was removed. Jesus from among them, the instruction was given to them that who has here hear what the spirit is saying because it was only left the spirit of Jesus listen to what he's saying listen to what the spirit is saying don't take and pick and choose what suits your life exactly what he's saying listen to it I was thinking listening is better than hearing I really not very great in English to be able to discern I thought hearing is less but here I thought hearing is a less word because you hear but you don't comprehend what is said and Jesus said that many times about the Pharisees. But he was asking you just to hear. The simplest format of hearing. Children of God, they don't hear his voice and they don't listen to the Holy Spirit. He didn't lose his time to tell you about the seven churches and the bad and the good. Uh, because you're none of the seven churches. But he's telling you in every comment over the, the seven churches, if you ever hear, hear. That's a personal uh, uh, preaching for you hear what the spirit is saying brother and sister stop listening to your own voice I'm going to give you a little, a little bit of intimidating picture uh, what did Jesus mean when he said who has ear to hear is this man has uh, or that animal has a ear to hear yes he, he does uh, uh, those animals you know he, the Lord need them when he was going to Jerusalem he picked you know a donkey and a, and a coat whatever a small donkey, and he won them. Jesus is in need of this. Anyone who is ready to hear, to listen to the, what the Spirit is saying, he will use him. Use those part of your body to uh, be used. Stop not listening to yourself. Here is how well do you listen? I thought that he's talking about listening when the word of God, who has ear to hear, is not even talking about listening. Because listening takes you in a place where you think about what you're hearing. You can hear my voice, but your, head, your heart is so distracted and you're not listening to what I'm saying or the meaning of what I say. But the, the, the Holy Spirit is so simple. He wants you just to hear his voice. Why hearing just the voice of God can be changing you? Even without listening. You know, I tell to people, especially the one who had the mental issues you know put the word of god on your mobile and let it, the, the word of god from the miracles of jesus or the book of psalms and i say that to you if you're listening to me run even when you sleep when run even when you are into the kitchen whatever that word is salvation is the calling of god of creation let it be light whoever eat my flesh and drink my blood is the same command he will come to you the hearing of his voice not even the listening will bring you life. Do you believe that? I guess you don't. But I'm going to show you this. This can make you really intimidated if you're still arguing. Very, really, very, really, I said unto you, the hours is come and now is. But the dead shall hear the voice. If a dead can hear the voice, not listen to the voice and comprehend the meaning of what God is saying. If just you can hear the voice of the Son of God and they hear, they shall live. How about you? Just put the word of God. I remember my father was on the deathbed. 
or, or you know, on the final of his days. And I gave him a recording tape, uh, which I was taking it to the, the country where I was going. And I was putting it and he just wanted to listen to the word. He's sleeping up, sleeping up. And the word of God was feeding his spirit, feeding his spirit all the time. Hearing the voice of God for the dead can make him alive. How about you and me? I didn't get even into the part of listening and comprehend and go into the details. But here again, my brother and sister, I don't want to go further from this because this can be message changing your life. If you go to the seven churches, drop the part of the seven churches and go for the message, which is directly and straight for you, not for anyone else. If you have this ear, hear what the, listen, the Holy Spirit is saying, the Spirit is saying to you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. The animals who are giving themselves to the Lord, you know, of course we know all the story of uh, Balaam, you know, when uh, the animal spoke the donkey. So that the Lord, this animal needed by the Lord and he want to use them. A lot of animals serve the Lord because they heard the voice of the Spirit. So he didn't say even how much you want to listen. Again, I don't want to repeat. But he has ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Father, I pray that those ears will be open right now. The dead ears will be open and they will hear your voice and they will respond to the Spirit the way that you want. Father, there will be no deaf ear after my message, Lord, to no one who hear my message, that those ears will be open because when they hear your voice, they're going to get alive and the joy of the Lord will come upon them. That's the way that they can really be restored again into your kingdom. For the time, I just want to go quickly for this. There is another way is seeing him. Uh, Pastor Elfie was praying last week or, week, uh, or sometime that he wants to see the Lord in a physical format. Is this something like really he created or is it like, oh, bless who, see, you know, believe without seeing. Uh, and here he's saying, and we now therefore have sorrow. It's John 16. So, but I will see you again, Jesus said to them, and your heart shall rejoice and your joy no man take from you. When you hear the Jesus, his voice, or when you see him, when those eyes, he anointed you to open the blind eyes. When you see the, the Lord, there will be a joy. No one can take it from you. You will be alive when you hear and you will have a joy, extremely great joy. It's John 16, 22. And Jesus gave that promise to the disciple and to you again. And the disciple rejoiced when they saw the Lord. When he came in the middle of the closed room and they saw him, they were rejoicing. We're talking about the joy. These are the elements who make you see and your rejoices come. We talk about the communion, talk about the word of God. We spoke about hearing his voice, hearing the voice of the Spirit, and seeing the Lord. It's your right to ask the Lord to let him uh, make you see him. We have here beautiful uh, things about joy as well. And the disciple therefore rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And he said uh, uh, this, he showed them his hand and his side, and the disciple saw the Lord, and they were extremely rejoicing. Another one after uh, in the book of Apostle uh, in the Acts, Apostle, he said, the apostle left the council and they were happy because God has considered them worthy to suffer for the sake of Jesus. So, you know, those people who were locked down and afraid and denied Jesus and ran away and he was by himself on the cross. They were coming to the, in front of all those people who crucified him and they were rejoicing because of uh, uh, the, the discrimination or the persecution or the prison that they'd be sitting in. There is rejoicing. So that suffering that you can be suffer for Christ will be a great rejoicing. I do not know if Christian of the century 21 can see that. If someone come and hurt your feeling, you just start crying. Oh, they did that because I'm a Christian. They did this and, and we are all like, oh, fragile little thing. I don't know if this is really what uh, the apostle had. We may be in a stage yet uh, as before Christ died. I pray that we won't be, an, you know, uh, intimidated or of, of the suffering or showing the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Don't. 
Don't be ashamed to show that you are a Christian and Christ-like. Because here is the rejoicing that you are after. Are you after rejoicing? And, and here is the, the million dollars uh, Bible verse. And this is the will of him who sent me. Jesus saying that everyone who sees the son. One of my best loved verses. And believe in him. May have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. Everyone who see, we drop the one, the part of see and we speak about believing in him. Everyone believe in him has everlasting life. I will raise him up. But the verse is not saying that. John 6 is speaking about you seeing Jesus. You have right to see him because your life will be totally changed from the realm of your doing here to another realm of just physically living until God call you up. It's a totally different transformation. The, the the Isaiah, so like I said, you know, the verse is said into the old and in the new. What Isaiah said, thine eyes, which means my eyes, shall see the king in his beauty. <laughs> so you're not going to see just a glimpse of Jesus or a shadow or whatever. That shadow can transform you, I assure you. But you see him in his beauty. Like he's, he's sitting there and you see, wow, what else do you want? How can make you joyful and really like I said to you, ask 10 people tomorrow, what do you want in life? And when you, you get the question in the right format, they say, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. That's all I want. They are not going to desire money or whatever or wealth. They may in the beginning, but if you really got them in the corner to see, examine their heart, everyone will be happy. I'm giving you here secrets of happiness and joy and gladness which come only here through the word of God. Thy eye, thine eye shall, or your eyes shall see the king in his beauty. Imagine that you, more than you can think and ever imagine, not describe to the, the, the mind of man what God is uh, keeping for his children. When the people of Israel were in the wilderness, when they look, only that look, Sometimes we think we should look and understand. Sometimes we think we should hear and listen. But God is so simple. If you if you hear, eh, if you hear his voice, you get alive. You just look at that pole. You get healed. God is not making his commandment complicated or hard for you to do. It's so simple. See the sun. And believe. Hear the voice of the Spirit. I bet you we understand the word of God in a different way. And you see the beauty of the king. They saw him and worshipped him. This is the verse for the one who said Jesus never accept worship. No, he did. Luke 24, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem. Everyone come and worship him. He led them. So he accepts worship and he said that he is God. Me and the Father are one. In, in, uh, in, in, uh, he said that to Philip and he said that into the book of John 10. Read the word, guys. Don't let those uh, corrupted minds, you know, steal from you the fact of uh, the, the piety of Christ who is in your life. Because you are following a great God. See the king in his beauty. You need to see all this little beauty thing that God is uh, showing you. They saw him and they uh, they worshipped him and they returned with a great joy. Is it in English? With a great joy. This is in English. This is in Arab. A great joy. Uh, I, I don't want to exhaust you. But here is, you know, maybe last thought and we go. Um, here is the saying, um, I'll go for this one better. It is hard to understand the Bible. Nah, 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 nah. It's hard to understand the Bible. Why? Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm explaining to you. I'm just reading it, guys. I don't put ideas. I just read it with you. I quote the verse and read. I don't give even an explanation of what other people uh, said about him. I just quote the verses for you. Everything is written in front of you are verses. Quoted. Why is that? Because the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God for him. Everything is foolishness to him. 
Neither he can know. He cannot really comprehend if you have a problem with the Holy Spirit. Baptist, Pentecostal, no, Pentecostal, no. Uh, uh, Lucerian, uh, Protestant, whatever. Catholic, Orthodox, you need the Holy Spirit. It's hard to understand the Bible because the author of the Bible is not talking to you. You never heard his voice. The word of God is so simple. He can share it with a child and he can change life. The natural man, the one who never received the Holy Spirit, cannot understand the things of God because there are foolishness to him. Try to speak the things of God for a man who is not receiving. Please, let's talk about, you know, the kufta or the, the, the food or whatever, or the sports or, or you know, any, any rubbish. I'm talking to you about the jewel who is in the word of God. The customer come and can send half an hour or more speaking of rubbishness and they're okay. The moment they want to talk about God, they want to leave. So now I knew when I want them to leave, speak about God. Shame. Shame. There are people who don't receive the things of God. It's foolishness because they cannot, uh, neither they can, he can know him because they are spiritually discerned. When your spirit is not born of the Holy Spirit, it's not born in you, you cannot discern those things. And, and, and uh, he was saying, why you cannot really in John, oh, sorry, I didn't interpret. Oh, why do you not understand my speech? Jesus was, ah, ah, ah. why you don't understand what I'm saying? Even because you cannot hear my word, not listen to my word. Jesus had a problem with these people. So the word of God is not uh, difficult. Is you who are not having the ability to hear it. You sit in front of your Bible like a dead. I love this picture and I love this one too, you know. That's the way. It's called the things of God. The things of God is like, you know, we have a little bit of treasure. Let me show you this one. Let me show you this one. Let me, those beautiful things, treasure that God has, he will show them to you and they are very clear. God is not hiding anything. But you sit in front of the word like, uh, uh, what is this? Dead man, I don't know. Look um, beyond the natural and see things into the light of God, in the light of faith, in the light of the Holy Ghost. We have foolishness. The things of God are foolishness. They are things of God, the secrets of God, things which are interested to him. So, last verse here, he said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither know him. If you have problem with the Holy Spirit, you will have problem for your rapture and you will have a problem for resurrection of your life, of uh, you from the death because the spirit who raised Jesus from the death is the Holy Spirit. And it's not the Holy Spirit that you're speaking about, it's the Holy Spirit who is in the word of God with all the description of the word of God about the Holy Spirit that you like it or not. So if you are an anti-Holy Spirit, there will come the time, the rapture will come and your body will not be able to be transformed to that incorruptible body. You will not. And that dead body will not have the power to raise Jesus, as Apostle says, saying, you will not resurrect your body. You need an energy and a power and, 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 and dynam dynamite power, strong power, atomic power, to raise that, to change your nature from corruptible to uncorruptible. So say sorry today to God, Holy Spirit, and repent and ask the Holy Spirit to open. To You listen, you hear, he's speaking to the dead, they can live, but for you, you don't want, you keep continue, have your own agenda coming from your denomination. And your pastor or your denomination not gonna save you, dear. It's only Jesus, the branch the righteous branch and his spirit, when it's alive in you, going to be alive. He will reprove you. There is a rod sometimes to, to remove some rubbish out of your life. And he'll give you the power of resurrection so you can be resurrected when the resurrection of the saint will come. Not the second resurrection, which is the lake of fire. 
If you don't take the first resurrection, the second resurrection is the lake of fire, as described in the book of, of uh, uh, Revelation. The Lord breathes the fire of the Holy Spirit into your hearts. Don't resist. Don't continue to go say no for the Holy Spirit. Don't think that you can have this dynamite power. The cross, the dynamite, the death of Jesus Christ and his spirit will come and dwell in you to resurrect you when the time is needed or to produce your body to be resurrected. And as we described before, uh, oh, this is for someone who are really away from the Lord. Um, uh, and and uh, it's, it's a special, special message for someone. I don't know who's this. You say, a merry heart does not does uh, good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. We're talking, of course, about the, the joy today. Uh, and, and here in Corinthian, he said they were talking about someone who did sin. And um, uh, so they, they asked to uh, forgive him, comfort him, that perhaps such a, a one should be swallowed up uh, with over much sorrow. You did a sin in your life. You offended the Holy Spirit and God. And that overwhelming sorrow because of your sin can over swallow you. So for you who having listening to my message and have that feeling, in the name of Jesus, I lose you from your sin and I release forgiveness over you. The Lord promised whatever you bind is bound. Whenever you lose, you're loose. you are loose from that sin. So that power of evil will not swallow you, but you will be restored to the love and the and, and resurrection life that Jesus is want for you. Another verse on the same line for godly sorrow works for repentance. This is godly sorrow. God, the Holy Spirit, give you godly sorrow, but he's not giving you a sorrow or a, a sadness to swallow you and finish you. That's the hand of the devil. Godly sorrow will lead you to repentance. Say sorry, Lord. But not be repenting, uh, but the sorrow of the word work best. So this is a special uh, message for someone who's listening to my message. May the Lord restore you. You are forgiven for whatever you did. The offense that you did into the heart of the Holy Spirit is forgiving you and restore you to your uh, place. And, and uh, why is that? Because when we fall sometimes, he said here, um, I will, uh, he said, he will turn your mourning into joy. He said, he girded me with gladness. This is one of my best songs. If turn my mourning into dancing, you have take off the sackcloth. The sackcloth is, is some poor, uh, you know, clothing that they wear when there is time of sorrow, when someone is di died. We don't do that anymore. Now we wear black. So he turned my mourning into dancing. He take my sackcloth. The, the clothes that are wearing for sadness and close me with joy. He took my sack loss and gave me joy. So today the Lord wants you to have that everlasting um, joy that the five version who were uh, with Jesus had. What do you think the oil that they had? Of course, you're going to say that's the oil of the Holy Spirit because all of us know that. But today I'm telling you, this is the oil of gladness of Jesus. The oil of gladness, not only the oil of joy, who transform you from a sadness or broken heart to joyful heart. It's the oil of gladness that you need to have to take you to the place of the resting in God. Father, I pray that um, you use this message of joy because many people need that joy, Father. I mm. pray that you use my words to heal the broken hearted and show them the beauty that is in your word. They don't have to be uh, living into um, a place of ha uh, pills, happy pills or whatever, or living because they're not dead. And all those situations that heart of men are or burdened by the things of life. But pray, Father, that this gladness, the anointing of gladness will coming from inside, will come upon that mantle of Jesus, will come upon them right now as we pray. Uh, and their heart will be really rejoicing in incredible great joy. I pray that into the name of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen.